unfold and also to add more perspective as to what this launch will actually mean for India and indeed for the world. We are joined in by Mr. Chris Hatfield, who is joining us live from Toronto. Uh, he is an astronaut and also the first Canadian to have walked in space. And thank you very much indeed, for, sir, for joining us in this broadcast and beyond. We are also joined in by Mr. Robert Perlman, who is a space historian and editor of Collect Space, who is joining us live from Florida. Uh, Mr. Hafi, let me begin by asking you this. Now, India is attempting this very ambitious space mission to the moon. We are calling it the Chandrayaan-2. How significant do you think this moon mission is? I think it's significant for several reasons, Mohammed. Uh, number one is just uh, it's still early technology, and only three other nations have been able to soft land on the moon. Of course, the United States has soft landed people on the moon 50 years ago this week, a mm -hmm. huge accomplishment. But the technology is still extremely hard. Uh, one of the most recent discoveries on the moon is 400 billion liters of water in just the part of the moon that Chandrayaan-2 is headed. But nobody really knows what state that water is in and whether we're going to be able to use that water and process it into drinking water or not. It's a big scientific question for everybody in the world. And these early steps that uh, ISRO is attempting, I right. think they're really important and it'll be really significant if they can, if they can succeed. Absolutely indeed, Mr. Hartfield. Do continue to stay on with this. Let me also bring in Mr. Robert Perlman into this. Uh, Mr. Perlman, now India is, of course, the fourth nation that is, uh, if successful, will be the fourth nation to make a soft landing on the moon. Why is it so hard to actually make a soft landing on, on the moon? Well, um, it, it may seem like it's a simple task to send a rocket from the Earth to the moon and, and just fire engines and, and touch down. But... In reality, it, uh, it involves a lot of different factors. It involves orbital mechanics in terms of getting to uh, from one planet to the moon and arriving where you want to be in lunar orbit so that you come down, uh, in this case, at the South Pole. Um, it's coming down autonomously because you need to be able to uh, have the, the lander be able to figure out if it's coming down in a safe area, that it's not going to land on top of a boulder or into a crater. And then you have to, uh, you're going to a place where no, no one's gone before. Right. And so you don't know what the actual uh, surface qualities are going to be like. Um, and so there have been a, a lot of attempts, more attempts to land on the moon than have been successful. Absolutely, indeed. And also, Mr. Hatfield, you know, uh, the fact that there is this renewed interest in, in, in fact, these space missions to the moon, why is it important for humanity to actually try and go and establish a base for itself on the moon? It's a continuation of the history of human exploration all around the surface of the world. You could have asked the same question at any moment in history and said, mm -hmm. why is it important to explore anywhere else? Right. Uh, the technology has always been the limiting factor. Is our technology good enough, say, to explore up into the Himalayas or to cross the Indian Ocean or to cross the Atlantic or the Pacific? Or could we maybe live in Antarctica or could we live on the International Space Station? As mm -hmm. the technology gets better, it allows humanity to live and then include that new location as part of the world economy. And we're almost technically good enough now to have a moon earth economy. It's, it's a new sort of perspective, but it's the reality of where we are. And if there is that mm -hmm. accessible water that Chandrayaan will be looking for, it really opens up the practicality of living on the moon. And I think our technology is just about there. Do you, do you think that we could look at living on the moon possibly in the next 10 years, Mr. Hatfield? Is that a possibility? Because uh, the International Space Center is something that uh, we've seen a lot of astronauts, in fact, you were there as well, uh, that astronauts go there on a regular basis. Could we set up something like that on the moon? Is that a real possibility now? It really is a possibility. If you think about it, Mohammed, 11 million people a day fly on commercial airliners. That's an aluminum container up where it's 60 degrees below zero, where there's not enough air to breathe even once. And yet mm -hmm. it's incredibly safe. It's just the technology is good enough. So going from there to a space station where we've been living for 19 years, the next step, the moon's 400,000 kilometers away. But the technology isn't wildly different. So, yes, it is something we can do collectively as a planet over the next 10 years, if we choose to. All right. That, that's very interesting. And also, Mr. Perlman, 
uh, you know, one of the aspects about ISRO is the economy with which they are able to pull off these space missions. We saw what happened with Chandrayaan-1 that was launched in 2008 and then with Mangalyaan as well. We are able to do it, you know, uh, at an expense that is almost cheaper by a factor of 10 in comparison with some of these other uh, space missions by other nations. Is, is that, do you think, a defining factor in making space exploration more economical that has set India apart? I think it, it very much is. It is a, it, it's a demonstration that where there's a will, there's a way, and that you can find ways to accomplish things that may not uh, have seemed possible within the constraints that you're, that you're working within. And it's also important for the entire world. We're not going to be able to establish moon bases and, and, and go fly onto Mars and go elsewhere in the solar system unless we bring the cost of space activities down, launch costs and um, operations in space. And so the world can take a, a, can take a lesson from watching what India is doing. All right, that, that's a very significant point. And Mr. Hatfield, if I can bring you in on this, you know, uh, we also saw Donald Trump announce that there will be another uh, human who'd be sp sent onto the moon. You, you know, the question that I would want to ask you is, uh, you know, humanity put its first man on the moon back in the year 1969, but the last man was in the year 1972. Why do you think there was this loss of interest, if one could so say, uh, in sending humans onto the moon? And this is now again picked up. Uh, the purpose of the Apollo program was to see if it was possible or not. It was a race. It was right. a targeted finish line. And when you say uh, if there's a finish line, once you cross it, the race is over. But since then, almost all space flight has occurred. Uh, that's where the vast majority of, of exploration has happened. Almost 570 people, including one Indian, has flown in space. But eventually you progress from space exploration to mm -hmm. space settlement, just like everywhere on the planet where we've gone from exploration to settlement. And that's where we are on the International Space Station. We've settled there 19 years ago, and, and there was another launch just very recently. People permanently living off the planet for almost 20 years. And are we now at the point where not just exploring the moon, but we can start permanently settling somewhere besides the surface of the Earth? That, that's kind of the key, key question. And, uh, and I think we are, if, if you look at all of the industries, right. including what ISRO is working on with their rockets. Absolutely. And also, Mr. Hatfield, you know, we, we have heard about what Elon Musk announced, that he would like to, in fact, set up a colony on Mars. Do you think, you know, in, in terms of how technically challenging it is, is it easier to set up a colony on Mars or is it easier to set up a colony on the moon? Oh, it's infinitely easier on the moon. The moon is right. only three days away. Mars is at least six months away. And also, you, you leave the Earth-Moon system. If you have a problem on the way to Mars, six months to get there, six months to come back, it's much, much more difficult. I, I agree with Elon. We should be working towards a permanent settlement on Mars. Because Mars is a much more Earth-like planet than the moon. But the moon is here and close and a, and a great place and necessary place to test all the technologies that we need. So what India is doing, mm -hmm. putting a rover under the surface, looking at habitability, looking at the water that's there, that's like a really important step in our eventual settlement, not only of the moon, but in the future.